And so I want you to join me. It's not strange to us. It's not his first time. It's not his second time. He's been coming, you know, uh, sometime with his wife. But today he is by himself. And uh, he is one of our own pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, True Vine Parish, which is in Yaba, Lagos, which is in Nigeria. So I want you to put your hands together in thanking God for the grace over his life, Pastor Lushegun Omotosho, as he brings the words to us this morning. Amen. Please let us rise to our feet this morning and let us thank God for the first quarter of 2019. Let us thank him for life. Let us thank him for our going out and our coming in. Let us thank him for all he's done for us in the first quarter of 2019. There was a plane crash on the way to, I think, Kenya in the first quarter of 2019. I, had, I have cause to know the past one, the professor inside that plane. He has plans, big plans, but God knows best. That we are alive, healthy, going up and down, let us thank him. Let us appreciate him. Because it's not by our power, it's not by our strength, but by his special grace. Father, we thank you, we appreciate you for all you did for us in the first quarter of 2019. We thank you for good health. We thank you for our going out and our coming in. We thank you for our children. We thank you for our marriage. We thank you for our various relationships. Father, we thank you. 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 Let us commit the second quarter of 2019 into God's hands. Exodus 33, 14 says, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Let us commit the second quarter of 2019 into God's hands. That Heavenly Father, wherever I step into, whatever I say, whatever I do, let your presence go with me. Let your presence go with me. Let your divine blessings go with me. Let your divine prosperity, divine health, divine power, divine strength, let it go with me in the second quarter of 2019. In this second half of 2019, Heavenly Father, let your divine wisdom, let your divine ideas, let your divine direction, let your divine protection, let it go with me in this second half of 2019, second quarter of 2019. Come and envelope me with your favor, with your grace, with your mercy in this second quarter. Envelope me with your favor, with your grace, with your mercy in this second quarter of 2019. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we commit this second quarter of 2019 into your hands. We thank you for the first quarter. We thank you for all you did for us. We thank you for your presence in all our activities in this first quarter of 2019. Heavenly Father, we commit the second quarter into your hands. Wherever we step into, Whatever we say, whatever we do, let your presence go with us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let your divine blessings go with us. Let your divine prosperity go with us. Let your divine health, divine power, divine strength, let it go with us in this second quarter of 2019. Heavenly Father, envelope us with your favor, with your grace, with your mercy. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Greet your neighbor. Welcome him or her to the church today. That you are blessed. That God will bless you. God will bless your family. I thank God again for giving me the privilege 
an opportunity to be here once again. I brought greetings from my wife. She sends her greetings as we greet everybody. In, I'm sure most of us know her here. She said I should extend her greetings to everybody here. And I'm sure shortly she will still, she will, will still come here. Amen. Today, the title of my message is his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts isaiah 55 verse 8 his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are definitely not our thoughts i will just talk about a few things and then we'll pray let me talk about creation first because everything started from creation everything 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 began with creation right from genesis 1 1 to genesis 2 25 is all about creation and its details Genesis 1 1 to Genesis 2 verse 25 is all about creation and its details. Heavenly Father, as we go into your word this morning, Heavenly Father, open our hearts. Let us receive from you. Don't let us leave this place the same way we came in. In Jesus' mighty name creation. Genesis 1, 1 to Genesis 2, 25 is all about creation and its details. Day 1 to day 7. Day 6, we can find that in Genesis 1, 26 to 27. God created man and god said let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them creation of man this was on day six genesis 1 verses 26 to 27 the details of the breakdown of creation we can find it in genesis 2 4 to 25 the breakdown of the creation genesis 2 4 to 25 god created woman if you look at Genesis 2, 18. That was when woman was created. And God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make an help fit for him. Let's still go a little bit further. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam. To see what he would call them. And who, whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Let us stop there. And from Genesis 2 23 to 25, he spoke about marriage. Genesis 2 23 to 25. And it reads, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and his mother and shall cleave to his, unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. 
And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Everything originated from the creation. Everything. That is the beginning of everything. Everything God created is spiritual. Everything. Meaning simply that is deep. Everything is deep. And only God knows the depth. Why? Because he created them. He knows the depth about marriage. He knows everything about man. He knows everything about woman. Why? Because he created them. Everything God created is spiritual. Simply meaning it is deep. And it's only God that knows his depth. And he's the only one that is in charge. Whether it's in marriage or relationship. Your own role is just to obey. That is your role. I will tell us about three things about marriage and relationships. Three things. Number one. Any marriage or relationship has three components. Any marriage or relationship has three components. And the three components are these. You the other person, and then the third person. Let me repeat myself again. You, the other person, and then the third person. Marriage has three components. You, the other person, and then the third person. Meaning that when you are looking at the issue of marriage, you should look at yourself. One. Never lose sight of the other person. Two. And never lose sight of the third person. Three components in a marriage. I will talk about you. I want you to know more about you today. The truth of the matter is, most of us, we don't even know who we are. We just know that we are existing. That's all. The question is, who are you? Ask your neighbor, who are you? Probably they will tell you, I'm Mr. So, so and so and so and so and so. Uh -uh. Who are you? Please ask the other, other, who are you? Number one thing about you is this. God created you in his own image. One. God created you in his own image. Number one. Genesis 1 verse 27. He created you in his own image. Genesis 1 verse 27. I want you to know more about you today. Still on that number one. When he created you, there was no input from you. No input. Tell your neighbor, no input from you at all. He decided to make you what you have. No input at all. Number two, you are very good. Tell your neighbor I'm very good. Look at me very well. I am very good. You can find that in Genesis 1 verse 31. Pastor was saying that somebody sent a message that complaining about the way people are talking I'm telling you today, you are very good. Irrespective of whatever anybody may, may be saying about you, you are very good. That's what Genesis 1 31 says. Number three, still about you. God created you and decided everything about you. Number one, He decided the family you come, come from. Am I right? He decides your color, He decided your sex. Did you have any input there? I can't hear. Did you have any input at all there? Did you have any input about your nationality? Did you have anything about your race? 
God created you and decided everything about you. Your family, your color, your sex, your nationality, your race. No input from you at all. The next one, still about you. He created you with a purpose in mind. He created you with a purpose in mind. Meaning, you are not a mistake. Meaning, you are not a mistake at all. Why? Because he created you because he has a purpose for you. And by his grace, you achieve that purpose in Jesus' mighty name. Sit on the next point. Still about you. That's point number four. Number which one? Four or five? Still about you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. It didn't just make you anyhow, anyway. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You can find that in Psalm 139, 14. Please, can you hear me? Psalm 139, 14. Let us just read that. Psalm 139, 14. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous. Are thy works and my soul know it right well. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Who are you? Silon, who are you? His purpose for you is to achieve his purpose for your life. His purpose for you is to achieve his God's purpose for your life. It's not your purpose for your life. His purpose for your life. Why? Because he created you and he has something in mind when he created you. See on God's purpose for, for your life. He created you to live your life to the fullest, not midway, not cut away, but to the fullest. That's why he created you. To live your life to the fullest. Who are you? He knows how he wired you. Who are you? He knows what best suits you. You don't know. How did he wire you? He knows what best suits you. Who are you? He knows who can complement your personality. He knows who can complement your personality. I put there, if they can let me put it on the screen. I put asterisks on some things about you. No, I put asterisks on, he knows who can complement your personality. If you don't get that right, if you don't get the right person that will complement your personality, it will be very difficult to achieve God's purpose for your life. You must get the right person, and he is the one that only, only knows the right person. That will complement that your personality. Before you can achieve God's purpose for your life, one, and because before you can live your life to the fullest. Meaning that there are some things you have to get right to achieve God's purpose for your life. Some things you must get right. And one of them is marriage. For you to achieve God's purpose for your life, as well as live your life to the fullest, you must get the issue of your marriage right. 
I said there are three components to marriage. You, the other person, as well as the third person. Let me talk about the other person. What is applicable to you is applicable to the other person. What I've said, if it's applicable to me, it's applicable to my wife. Our creation, she does not have any input in it. Uh, the, fam the family she came from, our color, everything, she does not have any input. Just like myself. So, all that is applicable to me is applicable to her as well. What is applicable to you is applicable to your spouse as well. That's the other, second, other person. The third person could be flesh. The third person could be God. I repeat, there are three components in any relationship or any marriage. You, the other person, as well as the third person. Now, I'm not going down to the third person. The third person could either be God or your flesh. That's the third person. With regards to that one, you have a choice to decide who will be the third person. Is it that my flesh or God? Why is marriage spiritual? I will tell you today. You know, I told you I've told you three things about marriage. Three things. I've told you about that marriage has three components. You, the other party, and then the third person. I've spoken about that. Then number two, we are address why marriage is spiritual. Because it is tied to your purpose in life. Marriage is tied to your purpose in life and determines whether you will live your life to the fullest or not. And it's tied to whether you will live your life to the fullest or not. I told, then the last thing about marriage is this. Marriage is about tomorrow, not about today. Marriage is about what happens down the line. What happens in 10 years' time? What happens in 20 years' time? What happens in 30 years' time? What happens in 40 years? It's not about tomorrow. And the only third person that knows about tomorrow is God. The only person that knows tomorrow is God. That's why you can't afford to toy with things about marriage or relationships because it determines what happens to you tomorrow the problem with most of us is this we approach marriage from the mental point of view from the mental angle i will tell you a little bit about myself when I was much younger, single then, when I was growing up, it is a must. You must go to church every Sunday. Even if it's just you go to church, you sit down. Probably you don't even hear anything. The approach is, I'm going to have to see my friends and I just and I go home. That was how I grew up. It was an Anglican church. And it was that style that took me to the university. Well, here they call it college. Okay? So that was how I entered university. I think it must have been around my 300 level. I was about graduating. Whether 200, 300. At a point in time, I sat down and I looked at my life. Young man, you will soon graduate now. Now, what next? Hmm. Okay. I started thinking, okay, I'll work for two years and settle down. Just like I told you, I was just an ordinary church goer. Just go there. They say we should go, they say we should go to church. I'll go to church too. Okay. 
I started thinking, I'll work for two years and then I will marry. Okay, you will marry. Good. But which sort of lady do you want to marry? I was talking to myself and I was thinking it through. And I gave myself some no-go area for me with regards to the issue of marriage. No-go area. Number one, I said, uh, please, anything I say, please just pardon me, forgive me. Let me start with that one first. I said, one, I will not marry a lady that comes from Lagos. You please, you know I said you forgive me. <laughs> no, I've said, I said it first, so. So, I hope you are forgiving me. Okay. I said I will not marry a lady that comes from Lagos. What? Very good question. Probably because in my university days, I grew up in Ibadan. And um, Ibadan is more, is more or less like a conservative place, sort of. And, um, okay. But probably because of my experience of what I saw with regards to Lagos the girls then, maybe then. So I said, Lagos gets out of it. Number two, I knocked off ladies that work in the entertainment industry or the media. That place too, no go area for me. You know, I said, you pardon me. Oh. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I'm talking about mental thinking now. Because that was the way I was rationalizing, looking at the issue of marriage then. And how old was I then? Probably around maybe 25, 26. A young man still trying to, okay, get a future partner and settle down. Number three. Huh? Any lady that reads theater arts, no go area. You know, I said, you know, I've told you first, before I started anything, that please, just pardon me. Then I was much, much younger. Younger, younger. Okay. Hmm. Okay. That was my thinking then, before I even married. Along the line, and I tried to maintain that, my approach till I even left university. I met my wife at the youth camp, at the NYSC. So while talking, ah, she said she, she finished from University of Lagos. Yeah? <laughs> ah. Okay, okay. Number two. Okay, while we are doing, there's there might definitely this primary assignment and so on and so forth. She says she's planning to do a primary assignment at NTA Ibadan. <laughs> at that point in time, I, I was looking at it where the best we can do is just to be friends. Because definitely, this is not... Ah, mm, this is not my area. No go area. Thank you. Thank God she did not read theater arts. That was the only thing out of it. But along the line, when we continued our friendship, I found out that this is the lady meant for me. I could have, based on my human thinking, I could have knocked it off right from day one. Why? Because I have my no-go areas. And that is where most of us, we miss it. All along, I was looking my, at my own, looking at it from the mental angle. And thank God, I did not miss it. And that's the challenge with most of us. Something spiritual, please let us leave it at the spirit. Let us regard it as being spiritual. It's quite different from something that will start reasoning, try to reason it out. Well, I'll do it by meditation. 
It does not work. The problem is that most of us look at marriage relationships from the mental angle. Let me give you another, I've started my own, looked at my own example. I'm sure most of us will know how Mitchell and uh, Obama, and Barra, how they met. Mitchell was her, was his, her boss. He was the one that was putting Barack through. You do this case like this, and so on and so forth. Along the line, they became friends, married, and so on and so forth. Mitchell was Barack's boss. God has a way of doing his own thing. The question is, we all have to be sensitive. What is God saying? That is the key thing there. What is God saying? In my former, in my church in Nigeria, there's this lady. She works with Zenith Bank. She was a manager. And then she was getting to the age of 30 and so on and so forth. So one of the ministers now told him that, my friend, there's this guy that your husband will come from the only police. Who is only police? I'm sure we all know only police here. Yeah? The people that say, okay, park there. Stays in front of the church and so on and so forth. And the lady now said, Me, holy police, a manager in, in bank, big bank, and so on and so forth. But along the line, both of them met and they got married. Now they are happily married, even have, I think about two or three, three children now. So, what am I telling you this morning? Everything about marriage, relationship, it is spiritual. Let us forget about thinking it through. It does not work. It does not work. Let us go back. The solution is let us go back to the drawing board and approach marriage from the spiritual point of view. Because it is the domain of God and God alone. That's why I started with this issue of who are you? There are a lot of things you don't even have any input in it at all. He, everything is from him. Let us quickly turn our Bible to so Hosea 1, 1 to 5. Hosea 1, 1 to 5. And it says, let me just start from but, okay, the word of the Lord came unto Hosea, the son of Barry, in the days of Uzziah, Ayaz, Ezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Josh. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of our lottery. Go, take unto thee a wife of our lottery. And the children of our lottery, for the land had committed great a lottery departing from the Lord. That was the instruction of God from him. A man of God getting married to an alot. But what did he do? And he went, meaning he obeyed. And took, I didn't say anybody should go and marry prostitute here. That's, that was, that's not what I'm saying, you know. But I'm saying God instructed him that he should go and marry an alot, and he went. And took Goma, the daughter of Diblam, who conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. Meaning, God has a purpose for everything that he is doing. He has a purpose for everything. Rounding up this morning, anything that has to do with marriage or relationships, please let us remove this idea. It's good to think, no doubt. But let us listen to what God is saying. Nobody says you should not think. It's good. To plan, it is good. But let us commit all into God's hands.
and he will help us and direct us all in Jesus mighty name and by his grace we will all achieve God's purpose for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus all eyes closed all eyes bowed we are still going to pray is there anybody here this morning just like I told you everything is spiritual that says okay I want to know more about this God because you need him to get some things right in your life. Is it something, or even everything right in your life? You need him. Just like I told you when I was growing up, I just, I'm just a, an ordinary church goer. I don't really know who he is. I just say, okay, you should go to church on Sundays. Okay, man, we'll go to church. Even if he's going to go and play with friends and so on and so forth. Is there anybody here this, this morning saying, I want to know more about this God. Can you raise up your hand so that I'll pray with you this morning? That I want to know more about this God. I want to know more about this God. Anybody? God bless you, my sister or my brother there. God bless anybody here again that is saying, I want to know more about him. Because everything started from him and is going to end with him. We don't have a choice. Everything started. For, any other person? 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 Just put your hand on your chest and I'll pray with you. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I commit your daughter into your hands this morning. It's giving your life, it, our life to you. Heavenly Father, forgive her all her sins. Forgive her all her sins. Heavenly Father, wherever she might have disobeyed you, Heavenly Father, forgive her. Direct her. Show her the way, show her the light. Heavenly Father, at the, at the end of our journey, don't let her miss heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Let us ask up to our feet this morning. Just take three prayer, prayer points and then we'll go. The first prayer point is this. Heavenly Father, in any situation I might have disobeyed you, or partially obeyed you. Heavenly Father, forgive me. In any situation I might have disobeyed you. Or partially obeyed you. Heavenly Father, forgive me. In any situation I might have obeyed you. Disobeyed you. Heavenly Father, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. In any situation I might have disobeyed you. Or partially obeyed you, forgive me, Father. God said, Ali, God said, Ali, good too. Like, told him, Ray Daily, Kakongo, Ali, God said. Our second prayer point this morning, this, this afternoon is this. Heavenly Father, help me to obey you 100%. Help me, help me. I have no power of my own. I lean on you, Father. Help me. Help me to obey you 100%. Help me to obey you 100%, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Help me to obey you 100%. Help me, help me, help me, help me. In Jesus' mighty name, I prayed. And finally, this morning, Heavenly Father. Let me achieve your purpose for my life. Help me to achieve my purpose for my life. And at the same time, live my life to the fullest. Help me to achieve your purpose for my life. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me to achieve your purpose for my life. And help me to live my life to the fullest. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, commit your children into your hands this, this afternoon. Heavenly Father, wherever they might have disobeyed you or partially obeyed you, Heavenly Father, forgive them today in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, help them to 100% obey you in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, commit them into your hands this morning. Let them achieve your purpose for their lives. And let them live their lives to the fullest. In Jesus' mighty name. So shall it be. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.